Okay, now that I got most of my, got the rest of my quick disconnects in, I've got the reservoir installed. And it goes from the reservoir now down to the, if you can see, it goes into the uh, in on a 360. Comes out of the 360 and goes to the uh, input on the 480. And then comes out of the 480 and goes in between the radiators. And up into the first RAM block. And out of the RAM block to the CPU and to the second RAM block. And then it'll come out of that and go to the uh, the in on the reservoir so that's how she's tubed up I still need to put a flow meter in line I think I'm gonna put it in line going back to the res and I also have uh, front I installed the um, installed the USB 3 panel DVD burner this is the uh, the IC dock with the four 120 Vertex 3's and then we have uh, another it's a Sony uh, DVD player and then I have a panel here <clears throat> and I'll show you why I did that. I have the panel so I could uh, easily pop in and get to the fill port on the reservoir So. Basically, this guy is going to go right in here, and the reservoir, the Kowsey Master Pro, which I have uh, that Apache fan, and that Apache fan, and I'll also have the fan that will be in the back over the CPU connected up. Uh, and then I have the Lamptron switch here that controls the lighting. Now I'm not sure, I might rearrange some, but the one thing that I definitely wanted is to be able to take this out without having to pull out the the uh, reservoir in order to um, top it off or fill it. So on either either side, I connected this in, uh, in series, so I put the loop and the res and I put in the front piece in the front to make it easy to bleed. So both pumps will be working in this in this setup. So now for uh, finishing up the tubing and then uh, putting the power supply in and uh, getting it cabled up and do some cable management and then testing the loop. So, <coughs> that's what she looks like right now. All right, guys, Ron's a nut here, getting ready to uh, start filling the loop. And uh, I'll probably time lapse some stuff or just cut into if it's filled up, if there's any leaks, I'll, uh, I'll show you. Um, but right now we've got all the rads, the power connected, the, uh, the jumper on the power supply so that uh, it doesn't power up the motherboard, it's just powering up the pumps and the fans. And you see uh, the loop all in place and then we're going to get started uh, putting some cooling in and the way I set up the reservoir I have that panel out there so I can just put the uh, cooling in anytime I want and top it off without having to completely remove the reservoir and let's see how it goes <laughs> Didn't he get a jacket? Way too much, I think. Way too much. Like, this is like my whole dad's first jacket. How's that? 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 More jacks. Look, it's all five Jews in the foot. Jackson. It's all Jackson. Jackson. Right here again. Dry. 
Okay, uh, we got the uh, system uh, bleeding pretty good. Um, had to lift the case and move it around a little bit to uh, get some air pockets out, but uh, it's uh, very light. Uh, one of the things that uh, I did not realize is when I installed this second pump on the RP452-2, uh, I for, forgot to pull the O-ring from underneath the uh, the stop, the plastic cap, and put it in here. So I was getting really poor results uh, and pressure coming out. And then needless to say, I had a few leaks dripping from the bottom of that uh, pump there. But once I realized it, I was able to take it out, put it in, and everything got back up and running. So I did make a mistake. Um, but now it's uh, it's running pretty good. Uh, you can't really see any. There's some tiny bubbles that's just going to take time and let it run overnight. But um, the water blocks look really good. The uh, Both of the RAM blocks are nice and cool. The CPU block, um, let's see if we can uh, get a close look at that. CPU block is doing good and we can't you see a couple of minor bubbles right at the top but it's doing good and you see the little white bubbles there in the in the tubes I only have the pump set on three I've been adjusting them a bit. I need to sleeve these cables here. Oh, we gotta take care of that. And then start mounting the power supply and running cables and getting everything dressed. And then of course installing the cards. So it's coming together. Probably to just finish uh, letting it bleed out leave some of these cables here there's the black and yellow ones the blue ones are the RPM ones and those ones I'll probably leave because they'll be tucked in back here anyway so looking good in the front there too. The RPMs on number two is the pump speed for one of the pumps. That's a fan speed. That's that pump. There's the second pump. So one set on two, the other one set on three. The temps you see here, um, that's the uh, the uh, temperature coming out of rad one, radiator one. That's the temperature coming out of radiator two, and that's the temperature coming out uh, going in back into the reservoir. So we got, uh, and they should be. There's nothing. There's no power on the system, so the processor's not putting out any heat. So uh, they should be about the same. Twenty-three point three. Yeah, they should all be about the same. And they are. So, that's it for now. Okay, clean that up. All right, uh, we've got the cable, the system uh, tubed up, so we have the tubing in place and uh, cabled up. Now the cabling has to be dressed up and nice and uh, and uh, tightened down, uh, but 
Uh, here is a shot of the uh, uh, Big Bang X Power 2 kick ass build. And uh, starting at the top, we have the uh, AX1200 installed. Uh, I did have the blue uh, Corsair kit, and uh, I'm using that so it's black and blue in my build. There are some black jumper cables here that I have connecting up my pitch power X stations. Um, those are going to be used for the different lighting that I have to uh, work out where I'm going to put. But uh, those are, uh, that's the USB port in the top section of the chamber. Uh, the Blu-ray burner and then the IC dock with the uh, four Vertex 3's in them. So that's what's connected up in the top. And then coming down to the main body of the chamber we have the motherboard that uh, has a PCI in it, the non-conductive coolant. The tubes originally were crystal clear the first day but they're like, they're like an icy coating in them and I've been reading online that I think uh, something reacting inside the tubing but it, it's okay I'm not going to change it out plus I'm going to put Mayhem's dye in it so I don't think it's going to make a difference anyway um, up there is another DVD uh, burner it's not a blu-ray but uh, that's in the top there <coughs> and then I have the uh, TMS 205, the Coolance with the uh, the expansion board mounted that's going to control all my uh, temperatures, my thermals, thermal probes, and also the pumps on the reservoir. Uh, so those pumps are going to be connected to that. I haven't gotten to any of that yet, but I'm about to fire it up and get it running here. So uh, again, a lot of that ca all that cable is going to get dressed up and put out of the way. The cable that you see inside there uh, will be neatened up as well. Um, but I got some UV blue um, SATA 6 gig per second cables. We'll see how they look. And we have uh, tubing, power connectors, and then I also have uh, LEDs in each of the in the CPU block. There's two blue LEDs, and in each of the RAM blocks there's two as well. And I'm waiting for the uh, Phobia cable to connect them up and then run them to a power source. Probably that that uh, Pitts Power X station right down there. And then you've already seen the radiator and fan. So that's what it looks like right now. And without the casing on, here's the front of the unit. might be better when you got some lighting in there there you go and there will be a panel in the front of this but right now I need to get to the fill port to top things off and then uh, I did get some uh, some fan filter fan filters and you can't really see them and that's good I got these um, the uh, DEMC I uh, magnetic uh, filters and I mounted them inside uh, to the fan but I only tacked the corners of the fan so if I want to remove them they're adhesive back for the magnetic so uh, anyway so they're mounted in there so I have some fan filters on uh, both of these guys here uh, this is the uh, uh, SATA uh, RAID fan out cable I have to connect up once I get the RAID card in there but um, again from the top down there's the fan filters uh, the Silverstone they're magnetic but I screwed them down to the fans so there's two blowing in and you have the regular uh, AP 15 fan blowing out you can see some of the cables better yeah that rat's nest is going to get cleaned up and uh, I put some sleeving on some of the cables there. Some of the stuff that's down the bottom you're not going to see, so probably will not have sleeving on that little jumper cable there. Alright.
that's it for now. Okay, I've got the system almost done. Still some things that need to be tweaked, but uh, take you through uh, what I have so far. Um, you've already seen the radiators. They're in the, both in a. Uh, this one's in a push configuration to the center of the um, uh, that chamber, and the other side's in a pull to the center. Um, I can reconfigure them right now. That's the way they're set up. Um, I have um, the tubing is set up so the first place that uh, I have uh, I have fluid coming out of the reservoir going into the bottom of the 360 SR1 coming out of that and going into the bottom of the 480 SR1 and then coming out of that and going between the two and coming up into the first RAM block then out of the first RAM block into the CPU and out of the CPU into the second RAM block then out of the second RAM block into the uh, back into the reservoir there's two pumps on that RP-252 uh, times two. And then coming up now, we've got, oh, the RAM that's in there is 32 gig of Corsair Dominator uh, 1600 um, megahertz RAM. And going up are the two um, MSI Lightning Extremes GTX 580s. And one thing to note, I, I originally, I like to have air space between them. So I did have uh, one card obviously in the first PCI slot and the second one in the fourth slot. So I had a slot of space where I put in, uh, I have a, uh, a, uh, a USB Firewire card that I usually put between them. Well, I did put between them. The problem is though, I couldn't run SLI because the motherboard and the system kept seeing the second card in a times one slot. So if you're doing Crossfire or SLI, Crossfire X or SLI, you have to use slots 1 and 3. Um, and you can do up to 4 SLI in this, but um, for my config, I had to use 1 and 3, so that means I had to put them next to each other, and I had to use some uh, little spacers, little bumpers. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of like that guy I have right there. It's a little plastic spacer um, that I use to keep the cards from bumping into each other. And I don't know if you can see it in this guy in between, but there is one uh, down between the two of them. So it makes it separates. Otherwise, uh, you can have the fans will just tick each other. Plus, that's going to make this first card hotter anyway. But I finally found some water blocks for these guys. So um, um, this, these will be upgraded to water cooled uh, graphic cards. And then the next card is the uh, that USB Firewire card, which I need one of the ports on that to feed the um, TSMS205 thermal water controller. Then above that is the uh, OCZ Revo Drive 2, so 240 gig. And above that is the uh, LSI 9260 8i RAID controller. And uh, so that's every slot filled except for the ones underneath the graphics cards and um, see the bays, the reservoir up top is a second DVD player and up in the top chamber I have a USB DVD and the four Vertex 3 120 gigs got a couple of fans servo stone fans that's blowing air down onto the RAID control of the OCZ and uh, the graphics cards and then there's the X1200 that's just about maxed out so at some point and see if I put in another power supply it would have to go here so I mean that's power supply has everything now but something I can consider in the future so that's what it looks like right now I haven't closed it up because I have some LEDs that I need to power for the uh, RAM blocks and the chipset and I also have some dye to put into the uh, coolant so that uh, we get a blue coolant. Right now it's kind of a frosted color. Um, that's something reacting to the tubing. It's PC ice clear that I have in there but um, it got frosted and it's actually not bad looking but I want blue. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the deep blue or use the UV blue and I don't know if I can combine the two I might try one and then if I don't like it do the other and then here's the front I don't have the panels on yet you'll see that but uh, 
There's um, more of a close up. I see dock. And there will be a panel over that. Kazi Master for now. That's currently showing the temps on the bottom there is um, temps of the coolant. The first one is outside of the first rad. Second temp is the temperature going into the reservoir after it's been through uh, the second rad and the chip sets. Oh, you can see that. Yeah. Anyway, then uh, ask a fans blowing air in. And there is some cable management that needs to be tidied up back there. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, here is the case, and believe it or not, those cables are dressed and tied up. It's just uh, tight around here is where everything goes, mounts inside, uh, run all the cables. Since there's such a long run, they need to run inside the case, like right at this seam here, where the grommets are. And that's an HPTX motherboard tray, even though I have an XLATX motherboard on it, um, just in case for future expansion. But that doesn't mean that the grommets are about out further a few inches so all the cables reach inside and are dressed and out here everything is tied down there are a few that may change but all of these are bundled together all the blue cables are the Corsair cables um, and then I mounted some tie wrap mounts in the ceiling here to loop the cables up so that you can actually open the slide open that trade door on the other side there's a couple cables I guess I could still tie some things down here, but that's pretty much the, uh, the side, getting ready to button it up. Here we have a couple of uh, two terabyte hard drives that I added uh, for mass storage uh, because I think I'll be filling up those SSDs pretty quickly. So that's for large video files and storage. I do have a server that the system gets backed up to, but um, I'm almost ready for the uh, final review and side panels on and uh, nice look with the sealed unit coming up. Well, she's just about ready to be buttoned up and um, this is the uh, Big Bang X Power 2 kick ass build and uh, she looks pretty fabulous. I'll have to turn the lights off. I don't have the uh, windows of the sides on. I think maybe I'll put the uh, side caps on here at the top and bottom chambers. And then I'm going to put uh, some uh, Mayhem's UV dye in. And then I'm going to add uh, UV, um, then I'm going to add some Mayhem's Deep Blue and see if I can get a UV Deep Blue. So, uh, be right back. Okay, I've got uh, panels on the top. Uh, on the top, I don't. On the other side, I do. And on the bottom, I have the panels on, but you can still see some of the lighting there. That's okay. And um, I'm going to see what I do here. I'm going to zoom in and turn off some of the lights. turn off this display all right now I'm going to get prepped so you can see the I'll turn off the uh, now I'm going to turn off the uh, blue lights and just have a UV light on light is the one on the top. Hmm. I'm going to have to rig one temporarily. I'll have to run one in the bottom once I get my extension cables. 
Okay, there she is with um, all the lights, plus the, the blue, light blue bathe light and the UV light on. Okay.